Welcome to another Bubble tutorial. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to use option sets in your dropdown. Option sets are an easy way for you to save a whole lot of processing space when it comes to Bubble. It enables you to define some unique values at once and use them globally in your application. It saves you time, it helps you create reusable elements, and you can basically use it anywhere in your application. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to, do, how to use option sets in your dropdown. Don't forget, you can always subscribe to this channel so you can see when I create new bubble videos or local videos. And also, don't forget to leave a like for the YouTube algorithm. So let's get straight to it. I'm going to you know, just move this and uh, just going to define this, make it a bit smaller. And... Yeah, I just make it a bit smaller and for this tutorial I'm using the I'm using the old engine. So we'll go to our, our data. So go to your data and click on option set. And you just create a new option set. So let's say drop down menu. Click on create. There are two things you can do with option sets. You can create a new option and you can create a new attribute. So a new a, a, an option it that these are things that you want to define and uh, then those attributes are paired with those options that you created for example we could say element and we could give an element a color but this time we're not focusing on attribute we're just focusing on the option set itself so first we could say the first assumption set could be uh, new could be It could be completed. So probably we created a new project, we've completed a new project, and another could be in progress. So you could use this for different types of applications. So now that we've created this, and the name of our option set is drop down, don't forget, we'll go back to our design and add a drop a, an option set. And just add a drop down. So this is our drop down. And also, this is our, let's add a button. Let's add a button to it to process our drop down. So you could use this for a form. This could be a search bar. It could just be anything. So we say save the value. So this could be it. So let's go back to our drop down. This is our drop down. Click on the drop down here. And here where it says choice, make it dynamic choice. It's going to ask you where's the choice going to be coming from it could be static choice if you want to but it doesn't it doesn't work if we say in progress what this means is that we will have to keep changing it whenever we want to whenever we want to add a new choice to it all of our application let me show you how that works we'll have to keep changing it so if we go ahead and preview our application you would see what i'm talking about so this is our choice. So if we click on it, we have new in progress and completed, completed. But these are static choices. They're not coming from our database. They're not coming from anywhere. So if we want to use this in another part of our application, we have to go ahead and copy this and go paste it there. But let's let's try the dynamic choice. With dynamic choice, click on type of content and we'd say, we'd say the type of content is what? It's a drop down. That's it. It's a drop down. And it will say, where are we choosing it from? So we go all drop down. That's what we want to choose. All the drop down. Then the option would be the option would be current option display. So what remember we're choosing choice content is dynamic choices, type of content choice is that option set. That option set that we created. The name of our option set is drop down. So that's why we're choosing a drop down. And how many choices are you picking? You're picking the all drop down and now you're displaying it. So you could give it a default value. A default value could be new. Yeah, default value could be new. Or another way to do it is to go back to your database. Maybe you want to do this for the user type. Yeah, for the for this user type, we we'll say create a new feed and we'll call it drop down. Then the feed type will be drop down. This will be the feed type. Yeah, if you click on it now, you can see all the options completed, in progress, and new. And we'll go back to our design, click on our on, on our drop down, on our drop down, and where we say default value, we would say current user 
drop down display so this would be the current users drop down so whenever the new default value would be the current users default value especially when they've signed up or especially when they want to update the project or they want to update their user role in your application if we go back to our application we can see right there let's go ahead and just we can display the same thing but this time it's not coming from the static choice it's coming from our option set if we go back to our data click on our option set and change this from completed to complete from in progress to working on it and save we'll go back to our design go back here without changing anything here come back here refresh and you can see now new complete working on it why because we're just changing stuff from our database and here when you click on the save you can then add a workflow this workflow will just save data you go right there and say um, make changes to a thing that's how you do it what do you want to make changes to current user and which feed you want to make changes to the drop down and it will be the current to be the current drop down value that's how you do it so whenever you click save so if we go back right here and refresh we we'll would select select and just click on save and it's saved already come back to our data remember what we picked here is complete come back to our database go back to our data uh, our app data and see we have a user here the drop down move let's refresh let's refresh go back come back here refresh it's not going to work the reason why it's not going to work is because we are not signed in um, it's not going to work because we're not signed in we'll have to sign up sign in first as a user before this will work so uh, we'll just go ahead and say you know not 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 that we'll go ahead and say run as this user run as this user and choose an option say working on it and say safe it's safe now and we'll go ahead and just go come back again this should work this should work just refresh So you, see, you can see it right here, our drop down here is working on it. So everything is coming from the option set. And so that's how to use option sets in your bubble application. I hope you love this tutorial. I hope it works for you. Go ahead and practice it. And I'll see you in another you know, bubble tutorial. Don't forget to leave a like. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you can always see, you can always see new videos on no code. Thank you very much. I'll see you in a different, in a different tutorial entirely. Thank you.